What's up guys, it's Royal Levy Sobro here and today we're going to be looking at 8 tips on how to make a budget team for SO5 in 2021. Now these tips are going to be useful whether you're looking at getting a global all-star team or a specific team for another division, for example Champion Asia or Champion Europe. So without further ado, let's get into these tips. So the first tip I'm going to share with you, and for me, definitely the most important tip for anyone looking to have a budget team in so rare, is making sure you have a common goalkeeper for your division. Now you get these common goalkeepers during the onboarding process and perhaps potentially by winning a reward in the rookie leagues. And for anyone looking at starting so rare with a smaller budget, it is a must have to get a starting a common goalkeeper as rare goalkeepers, anyone that starts, you're looking at upwards of sometimes upwards of 500 to 600 pounds, if not more. So getting a common goalkeeper is very important. For example, in my onboarding process, I got Wojciech Szczesny of Juventus, obviously their number one goalkeeper, the Poland number one goalkeeper. So that sets me up long term to have a starting goalkeeper whenever I need to put in my global all-star division four team. And then moving on to tip number two I would definitely say go cheaper on your defenders as there's a lot more defenders that consistently score anywhere between 40 to 60 points it's quite rare to see defenders consistently get above 60 so the ones that do are obviously going to be more expensive but there's often not too much difference between for example a 150 pound defender and a 40 pound defender you know as long as they start each week for their team that's the main thing as any defender who starts and plays most of the game is likely going to get anywhere from 40 to 60 points so you should be saving that money for other players in the squad which moves me on to tip number three which is saving more of your budget for your forwards now again similar to defenders you can get decent midfielders that score pretty well for example Pedro Chiravella here he gets decent so five scores for a cheap price same as Simon Gustafsson for example at about 100 pounds he's getting 60 60 plus in his last five games definitely save more of your budget to get a good forward who starts every week as his team's main striker and preferably you know he gets a few goals here and there throughout the season and that should put you in good stead to win rewards as strikers who score more goals are naturally going to be more expensive so you're going to want to save the top end of your budget for these players. For example, in my team, in Challenger Europe Division 4, I went for a budget option of Quasi Riet, a starting striker for Willem 2. And he got 8 goals in 24 games last season. I spent about £100 on him. He looks to be their starting striker for the upcoming season. So you can already see this is reflected in his transfer market price as that's risen a bit as well. And I'm confident he should do well for me at a decent price. But obviously if you save more of your budget on other positions you can stretch this even further on a forward for your team moving on to tip number four an important one is to follow the transfer news in the off season as well so obviously you don't want to be buying a player who's moved to a team outside of sora's coverage that's very important to look into when you're buying your players as well as keeping an eye on any players that are potentially moving to a club where you think they could score decent points so it's just important to keep an eye on who's moving where, who's not moving where, so you're up to date on your team and potential targets that you're looking into. Now this leads into tip number five, which is to use transfer market to stay up to date with teams and players. Not that I'm sponsored by them or anything, I just uh, I think it's a great site to use. It has up to date information on teams and players and just for using transfer market alone, they've made me a couple of hundred quid in the past. So before the start of the J League season in around March, I bought a goalie called No Don Gion for about £40. And I did this because I was looking at the J League teams on transfermark.com and seeing that his team at the time, their number one goalkeeper with the number one shirt, had left the club. So I was looking at this thinking, okay, this keeper, No Don Gion, he's 28, 29 now. Now it's probably his time to step into the number one shoes and start for this team. So literally within a week, uh, the J League started. And as I'd initially thought, no Don Guillon was now their number one goalkeeper he kept a clean sheet got I think a 68 or something in his first week and eight days after buying him I managed to sell him on for about 380 pounds so using transfermark.com made me over 300 pounds alone to spend on other players in my team if anything my only mistake was not buying more of him at the time but uh you know it was a gamble and this one paid off but yeah I think that just reiterates what a great site transfermark can be just for looking at teams looking at how many games players played last season, what positions they were starting in, and using that to forge your team for the coming season. And then tip number six is uh, another site I'd recommend to anyone is SoRare Data. 
And this site is very useful for keeping track of how much players have sold for in recent weeks, how many games they're starting, you know. Obviously when you're looking at players on the transfer market, sometimes the lowest price for a player could still be way too high, for example. Like this Nikolai Larsson I bought just two days ago for about £50 equivalent. His lowest card on the market is now £280. So obviously if you're new to the game, you don't want to be spending £280 on a player that is worth £50. If you type in Nikolai Larsson into SoRareData.com up here, you'll be able to see what he is actually selling for on the market before you perhaps make a mistake on anyone you're purchasing. And you know, SoRareData.com is not malicious or anything like that, so there's no worries about using your login details to get onto the site. And then tip number seven, as we sort of touched on earlier, is speculate to accumulate. You know, you sort of got to take risks when you're on a budget, find some lower value players that perhaps haven't played too much recently, but you suspect they might play more in the coming season. Obviously no Don Guillaume that I mentioned earlier, who I sold on for a profit. And this season I'm looking at doing it for Olivier and Cham and Nikolai Larson. Both players I got for around 50 pounds. I expect them both to get more at game time this season. And Cham looks to be staying at Celtic, obviously one of the best teams in the SBL. So if he does start playing for them, he should get very good points and I could hopefully make a profit on him. So yeah, I've took a bit of a gamble on these players for uh, small fees, but if they do start playing, not only will you have players that are scoring you points each week, but you'll also see your portfolio rise in value. Like I say, research, have a look at the teams and see what players you think are undervalued on the market and make use of that. And then my final tip for anyone joining SoRare is to make use of your affiliate link. As you can see, mine's here on the screen now. I'll put a cheeky little plug in, so uh, do sign up using that if you fancy giving so rare a go but it's good to see if you can get anyone you know to sign up for your affiliate link alone as after five rare purchases from the person who signed up for your link you'll both be rewarded with a rare card for free you could definitely get a player that scores points and is useful for your team and giving you a bit more depth to your club for example i got alessio de cruz last season who at the time was on loan at greningham playing every week scoring 40s to 50s and he was a great option to have for my global all-star team and boosted me up over those thresholds a couple of times. So yeah, those are my eight tips for starting a budget team in SoRare in 2021. Now I'm not an expert at this game by any means, so take everything you hear with a pinch of salt, but I think they're solid tips and advice to go on. And of course, like and subscribe if what you found out was helpful and uh, see what I do with the channel in the future. Cheers all and good luck for your SoRare season.